from the Genie Hayes Virtual Studio, this is Marquette Now. Good evening and welcome to Marquette Now. I'm Rachel Bandy. And I'm Matthew Martinez. Wisconsin now has a new governor for the first time in eight years. Tony Evers unseated two-term incumbent Scott Walker. Evers defeated Walker 49.6% to 48.4%, barely outside of the legal bounds for a candidate to request a vote recount. However, the Senate race was not as contentious and was called rather early in the night. Incumbent Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin did not find much resistance in her fight against Republican opponent Leah Vukmir. Baldwin won 55.4% to 44.6%. Keep in mind that these are technically unofficial numbers until later this month, but they are unlikely to change. Even so, we kept up with students hitting the polls at the AMU yesterday. Abdallah Al Goud reports. It's a cold and damp morning on Marquette's campus, but for students, it's not an ordinary day because today is the midterm elections. Students that were unsure about their polling locations have resources available, and Wisconsin offers same-day registration. It is my first time with this address, so I kind of had to re-update uh, re mine. Yeah, no, it actually looks like uh, I can actually do it at the Union. Students that live on campus can vote either at the Wisconsin Conservatory, Central Library, or the AMU. For Marquette, if you're a Wisconsin student, um, you can use your ID and show, and then also show a piece of mail that shows that you actually live on campus so that you're part of this area um, to be able to vote. Or you can, uh, if you're from out of state, you can get a student voter ID and then use that to then get your ballot and vote. Along with voting, some students canvass for candidates. With the Tammy Baldwin campaign, um, and I canvassed, which I'd never done before. It was kind of scary, but once I started doing it, it was really fun, actually. You just went door to door, and you got to talk to people and tell them how important that their voice is and that it actually matters. Despite the weather conditions and exhausting lines, students didn't stop doing their civic duty. The line looked short, but it took about 30, 45 minutes. Reporting from the Alumni Memorial Union, I'm Abdullah Ogu, Marquette Wire. There's a lot to consider about just what happened last night during the battle for governor. WISN political analyst Mike Goucher spoke with us earlier today to help provide some insights. Yeah, I think it it's demonstrates that, that we're still not an easy state to categorize. Uh, a lot of people uh, were talking about a blue wave. I don't know that you can call it a blue wave, what happened on Tuesday night. Uh, yes, we have a Democratic governor, and yes, we'll have a Democratic attorney general, but we'll also have a Republican-controlled legislature. Uh, the Assembly uh, did very well, kept all of the seats they had, still 64 to 35, Republican majority. And in the Senate, the Senate actually saw Republicans pick up a seat. Students have some interesting things to say about the ballots they cast last night. Clara Jansen has the reaction. Students flooded the AMU on Tuesday to fill out their ballots. Wisconsin allows same-day registration, so many Marquette students filed in throughout the day to wait in multiple lines for a chance to cast their votes. After finishing at the polls, students gathered with friends around campus to watch the results roll in. I'm here tonight in Johnston Hall where students have gathered for an election night watch party that was sponsored by the Political Science Department and College of Communication. Students shared their personal testimonies on why they believe it is so important to vote. I went out and voted because, if not me, who? <laughs> um, and if I want to see some change, then I have to be the change that I want to see. Some students had to go a few blocks off campus to reach their polling locations, but the university provided free shuttles all day. For many younger students, this was their first time voting in an election. A lot of people our age think that their vote doesn't count, so I decided my first time voting, why not Okay. try to make a change. Students are up late into the night anticipating the outcomes of tight races. I voted today because I think it's important, and I don't know that I have a better answer than that. <laughs> From waiting a long time to vote during the day to waiting a long time for the results at night, these Marquette students are passionate about the midterm elections. From Johnston Hall, I'm Clara Jansen, Marquette Wire News. Dean of the College of Communication, Kiyomo Ayun, is now Marquette's acting provost. He's filling the shoes of Dan Myers, who stepped down a week ago today. 
College of Communication faculty are reflecting on the future after the loss of IUN. I found that they say that the future is still bright. Changes are rocking the foundation of the Upper Marquette administration. Provost Dan Myers resigned suddenly last Wednesday, leaving the Dean of the College of Communication, Kimo Ayun, to take over as acting provost. For me, it's always about what do we do to align our resources to be able to give the absolute best student experience and do that within the context of being a Catholic Jesuit institution and university. I'm excited about that. President Lovell addressed the issue at a Beyond Boundaries event Friday. If you look at both Joel and Chemo and think about the skills that they bring and you know what great people we have, I mean, I'm very excited about the future and helping them achieve that future. This is the second high-profile departure in two weeks. Former Executive Vice President of Operations Dave Waller left Marquette October 25th. Some College of Communication faculty are happy for Ayun, but are also worried about what this means for the college's future. We just have to resign ourselves to the possibility that he could be the permanent provost, not just acting, and so we may have lost him forever, but we don't know. We have a lot of great people who can step up and help um, continue to steer the ship. I have no doubt that we will continue to move forward. However, Ayun's wife, Catherine, says it'll be just fine. We're going to be fine, and we have him still on campus as a resource for those moments when we encounter something that we're not quite sure of what was going on or what happened. We can always go and use him as a resource. I actually feel really confident that we're going to be okay. I'm Matthew Martinez, Marquette Wire News. The Marquette University Police Department is still searching for a new police chief. Former Chief Paul Muscari resigned last May after being arrested for intoxicated driving in January. MUPD claimed they'd have a new chief by early October, but it's already November. The advisory board last met on Monday, but nothing new came of it. Diwali night is this Friday in the AMU from 9 p.m. to midnight. The Indian Student Association is hosting the event in partnership with Late Night Marquette. Diwali is a Hindu holiday signifying light over darkness, evil over good, and knowledge over ignorance. A new student recycling initiative is reinventing plastic recycling on campus. The Environmental Student Organization revived plans on installing two machines at Marquette, a shredder and an extrusion machine. The machines will turn plastic objects into flakes so they can be used to make other things. Boy, it sure is getting cold out there, isn't it? You've broken out your parka yet? I actually did. Today was the first day I used my parka. Maybe Lucy Sullivan can tell us more about that. Lucy? Yes, I can. Looks like those two weeks that we saw fall are over here in Wisconsin. Right now outside, it's about 38 degrees with a slight wind coming from the northwest. Um, temperatures are expected to drop tonight, however, with the entire state not breaking freezing. Up in the north near Minocqua, it's supposed to hover around 20 degrees. Down in Milwaukee in the south, it'll be about, about 29 degrees. So if you haven't turned those heaters on, I'd suggest you do it so right now, because tomorrow it's not expected to be that much warmer. Milwaukee will be the warm spot down here with 39 degrees, not quite breaking 40. Up in the north, they'll again hover around the freezing point. But tonight, again, if you haven't turned those heaters on, turn them on, because it'll only be 29 degrees with winds again coming out of the northwest. Although it will be chilly tomorrow as well, at least we'll have sunshine. It's supposed to be clear skies with pretty moderate winds, so just make sure you have your parker on. Let's take a look at the five-day forecast, however. We do have a slight chance of snow on Friday, unfortunately, so winter has come. But Saturday, we should see that clearing up and have sunny skies with a high of around 34 degrees. On Sunday, it'll be a little bit warmer. We'll break 40 and the high will be 41. But that will change again as we get into the week. As you can see, Monday the high will be 35, and Tuesday we won't break freezing. It will be 30 degrees here in Milwaukee. But we'll have more news for you right after the break. Stick around. Welcome back. If you're tired of walking or taking the bus, there's a brand new way to get around downtown Milwaukee. The city's new streetcar, nicknamed The Hop, began service this past weekend. Natalie St. Ange captured the action. <laughs> One, two, three. The Hop 
Milwaukee's first streetcar system since 1958 made its debut on Friday. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino is the streetcar sponsor and made the first year of rides free. This is not your grandparents' streetcar. You'll find it smooth, quiet, and accessible to everyone, no matter their abilities or their age. And for the first year, it's something that every Milwaukeean loves. It's free. We're here at the grand opening of the Hop, Milwaukee's first streetcar since the 1950s. Mayor Tom Barrett and Congresswoman Gwen Moore introduced the new transit system at Cathedral Square Park. The crowd's excited and the DJ's playing. It's all happening right now. The two routes will run south to the third ward and north to the lakefront with a capacity of 150 passengers each. A round trip ride is about 15 minutes along four miles of track. Where are you hoping the hop will take you? Well, lunch. first and foremost, lunch. <laughs> we, we want to tour around and t check out the loop, but stop along the way and take advantage of everything that the stops have to offer. I like trains and moving vehicles and shuttles and so forth, and I, I this will be good for our city too. So far it looks really cool to ride because you get to have fun and look at all the things that you it's around downtown. Reporting from Cathedral Square Park, I'm Natalie Sinange, Market Wire News. You might be wondering how much did this all cost? The numbers add up to about $124 million. The first year of rides is free because of Potawan Potawatomi Hotel and Casino sponsorship, but the fare will be $1 per ride after the year is up. Marquette's annual community com campaign is continuing to support initiatives from the greater Milwaukee area. The university announced that almost $360,000 were raised through this year's campaign. The proceeds are being distributed between Marquette Scholarships, United Way, and the United Performing Arts Fund. If you have any old jackets or sweatshirts lying around, now's your chance to get rid of them and do some good at the same time. The College of Health Sciences is running a clothing drive in partnership with Food Pantry Network, Dispensa de la Paz. Donna Sakar has the story. And students are all bundled up for the chilly week ahead. But for some, the added layers of warmth can be a privilege. They need hats, mittens, gloves, um, coats, shoes, socks, underwear. The College of Health Sciences Alumni Association has taken matters into their own hands by inviting students and staff to donate clothing in the drop box located in the speech pathology office in Kramer Hall. All items will be donated to the Despensa de la Paz, a network of pantries that serves over 50,000 people nutritious and healthy food annually. We chose Despensa de la Paz um, because it's part of, part of the um, enlightening of the um, College of Health Sciences Alumni Board is to um, network with communities, provide service, um, and create a legacy of helping the um, people in our community. Some students wanted to help out in any way that they could. Growing up here, um, I've seen the different types of socioeconomic statuses and how people live, and um, some people just um, are not born with the privileges that I was. Um, so I just feel like I have all of this stuff, why not give back to um, a population and a community that's important to me since my whole life. Big hearts and even bigger smiles. These students really care for their community. So we heard about the clothing drive through an email. Um, we get sent out weekly emails that have um, information about what's going on in um, our department. So, um, and this is one of the things that came up, so we're happy to take part in it. Socks, sweatshirts, coats, and shoes. Whatever you've got, give it. From Kerma Hall, I'm Donna Sarkar from Marquette Wire News. One faculty member is being rewarded for his research in shock physics. The U.S. Air Force gave Mechanical Engineering Department Chair John Borg $1.5 million to conduct investigations into accidental explosive detonations. Borg's shock, <clears throat> Borg's shock physics lab studies how the response of condensed matter changes under con extreme conditions. Alpha Epsilon Delta Honor Society is raising funds for City on the Hill, a clinic that provides services to low-income Milwaukeeans. The organization was on a mad dash last Friday as part of their fundraising efforts. Blake Rupee has the details. On the corner of 23rd and Kilbourne sits a building once vacated by the Lutheran Deaconesses. As cars pass by today, its current residents are bringing back life into the community. A few blocks back on campus, 
Alpha Epsilon Delta fraternity are working with City on a Hill to raise awareness for health care with a seasonal movement. The Monster Dash is the first of many efforts this pre-professional honor society is working towards. Event organizer Dmitry Kravtsov was one of the students advocating for supporting City on a Hill. And, uh, pretty much we're just partnering with City on a Hill, which is a free clinic here in Milwaukee that um, takes care of underserved and homeless populations. And they really do a lot and they provide quality health care to people who really don't have any access at all. This race is a round trip down Wisconsin Avenue from Marquette University and to O'Donnell Park on Lake Michigan. But this didn't stop Katie Rufino as Pac-Man and her team of ghosts from making it to the halfway point. But yeah, no, we're, we're not going to end. You know, we got to push to the finish because we're doing this for a good cause. So, yeah. Reporting from downtown, I'm Blake Rupi, Marquette Wire News. Don't go away. Zoe Comerford has sports update next. And we have a new episode of Down to the Wire with Natalie St. Ange after the break. Welcome back to Marquette Now. I'm Zoe Comerford with your Marquette Sports Update. We have a quick update on men's soccer. They're playing number 17 Creighton for the Big East semifinal right now. The current score is 0-0 in the 15th minute. If the Golden Eagles win, they will head to the Big East Championship game Sunday. In men's basketball, the Golden Eagles defeated the Golden Retrievers of UMBC last night 67-42. Chris Reisner has the highlights. <laughs> In its inaugural game at the new Pfizer Forum, the Marquette men's basketball team took down UNBC 67-42, and defense was key. Well, the story of the game was our defense, and uh, we haven't won a ton of games in the past uh, on the defensive end. And on a night where our offense wasn't as good as it's going to be, uh, our defense was very sound. Marquette held the retrievers to shoot just under 23% from the field. Sophomore forward Theo John put up the first double-double of his career, posting 11 points and a team-high 10 boards and three blocks. One of my roles on this team is to defend the basket, and uh, that's meeting shots at the rim. Um, I've always tried to be a shot blocker, and i got to uh, bring that to this team and just uh, help my teammates out with that. I thought he gave us an incredible spark off the bench and uh, to play just over 20 minutes and to get a double-double, uh, to not only be a presence around the rim, but a lot of the times he was away from the basket having to guard shooting fives or on switches guards. And he handled those situations really well. Several Marquette players made their debut, including redshirt freshman Joey Hauser. The highly sought after recruit scored his first basket on this three, with brother Sam right there to congratulate him. The strength of our team is our team. And we have a group of guys who on any given night can be the spark plug and catalyst uh, for our team. I don't know who it's going to be on any given night, um, but we need all of our guys with the egos of I'm important, I'm valuable, and I'll be ready to do whatever it takes for our team to win. Alongside Jack Phillips, Chris Reisner, Marquette Wire Sports. This past weekend, women's volleyball went 2-0 with wins over Villanova and Georgetown. But they lost a set to Villanova. That was their first Big East set loss to a team other than their foe Creighton. Allie Barber led the Golden Eagles with 15 kills against the Wildcats and tied with Hope Works to lead the team with 13 kills against the Hoyas. Marquette is still number two in the Big East and they are 19th in the NCAA. The Golden Eagles head to Butler and Xavier this weekend to finish up their four match road stretch. That's all I have for sports. Don't go anywhere. Natalie St. Ange will be right back with Down to the Wire.
Let's go back to last night's election for a minute. Members of Marquette University's student government are asking for classes to be canceled on election day. They say students don't have time in their schedules to stand in line for what could be hours. We have Margaret Cahill on Down to the Wire with Natalie St. Ange. Thanks, Rachel and Matthew. I'm Natalie St. Ange for Down to the Wire, and I'm here with Margaret Cahill, who wrote an article in this week's Tribune about MUSG potentially recommending a university-wide day off to go out and vote. Welcome, Margaret. Thank you for having me, Natalie. Of course. So how is MUSG going about making this day off happen? Well, the MUSG Le Legislative Vice President, Dan Brophy, is currently working on legislation that would recommend to the university to cancel all classes for Election Day. Currently, there are some professors who have independently decided to cancel their classes. However, this recommendation would encourage Marquette to make it a university-wide policy to have classes off on Election Day. Sure. So how did some of those professors um, go about making that day off happen? Why did they do that? So some professors did this to give students more time to vote because time restrictions can potentially prevent very busy students from voting. Um, students who have classes all day and then clubs and organizations and might go from an 8 a.m. to other classes and then work and other responsibilities. And it also allows for um, students to realize the importance of voting because having a complete day off show, really sends a message to students that voting is important and it's something they should be paying attention to. Sure, so what are some of the biggest reasons that you found out that students are having trouble going out to the polls? Well, like I mentioned, time is a huge issue. Students who are have packed days might find it very difficult to find time to go vote. Um, and I know yesterday the AMU was packed, there were really long lines, and so some students might feel that they simply just don't have time in their day to fit in voting. Um, another reason is some students may feel that um, their vote doesn't count that much, or that it doesn't matter, or that the policies and elected officials don't directly affect them, so that might contribute to them choosing not to vote. Of course, and so it being election day yesterday, did you run into any students who had trouble going out to the polls? Well, I know some students were frustrated with the long lines in the AMU, and I know other students also felt the kind of apathy of not really feeling like their vote matters very much, and so I think that's why some other students chose not to vote. So those two reasons, I think, were the two ones that inhibited students yesterday. Sure. So what do you think? Should students have the day off and, um, to go vote? I think that students should have the day off to go vote. I think that any excuse of not having enough time would not be able to be used if the student had the whole day off to vote. They would have a lot more time in their schedule and it would also really send a message stressing the importance of voting and make students more aware of this really important civic duty that we all have. So I think that we should have the day off to go vote. Sure. And then why do you think people would argue that we shouldn't have the day off to go vote? Well, I think that some people may argue that because they might not realize that students have very busy schedules and might not be able to find the time to go vote if it wasn't if they didn't have the day off or also um, they might think that classes are should be a priority for students however I think that um, well education is definitely a priority voting is a priority and voting um, influence edu is influences education so I think that students should have the day off Perfect. Thank you so much for being here, Margaret. I'm Natalie St. Ange for Down to the Wire. Back to you guys. Thanks for tuning in to Marquette Now. For more news, visit marquettewire.org. I'm Rachel Bandy. And I'm Matthew Martinez. Good night, Marquette.